Bill Weiss was chosen by God to spend 23 minutes in hell as a non-believer and report to the world of its reality. He also was told about when Jesus would return. Next, on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with uh, Bill and Annette Weiss. And uh, Bill, before you had, and, and get this, he had a literal guided tour of hell. Before that happened, what did you think about hell? Well, Sid, I never really thought about hell. I've been a Christian for 40 years. This happened 12 years ago. But I never really studied the topic. I had no interest in it. My wife and I never see dark movies or entertain anything evil like that. But I, I knew it was fiery, and that was as much as I knew. So I've learned a lot since then. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take you to that date, November 23rd, 1998. And uh, you go to bed. You get up at what time? Three in the morning? I got up at three o'clock just to get a glass of water. How did you know it was three? I looked at the clock. Okay, you get the glass of water. What happened to you? Suddenly, said I found myself. I was being pulled out of my body. I like this was an out of body experience, and I've never had one before. But I was pulled out of my body, and I found myself falling through the air and tumbling down this long tunnel. And I entered into this open cavern area, and I hit this stone floor. And I found myself in a prison cell with rough hewn stone walls and bars. I was actually in a prison, but it looked like a dungeon, filthy, stinking, smoke filled uh, prison. Did you realize where you were? I was fully awake and cognizant. I was not dreaming. No, I understand, but, but did you know you were in hell? Yes. The heat was far beyond the ability to sustain life, so I knew immediately I was in hell. And there were demonic creatures in this cell with me. Uh, they were pacing like a caged animal. Real ferocious, vicious demeanor. Like no creature I've ever now, seen. Now, before this, are, were you one prone to visions and uh, th th things like this? No, I've never had a vision before. And like I said, I was fully awake and cognizant. I was actually in this place, Sid. And to see these demons pacing in the cell, they had extreme hatred for God. And then he directed that hatred towards me. I wondered why, what have I done to them? But the one picked me up, threw me into the wall. Uh, tremendous strength in these demons. But wait a second now. You were Christian. Right. You're not supposed to be in hell. Didn't you remind them? <laughs> <laughs> I would have. <laughs> well, Sid, so the only way a Christian can see hell is in a vision. This was a vision. And God hid it from my mind that I was a Christian. He blocked it from me. There's many scriptures I could give you for that. But the purpose was so I could experience what an unsaved person would experience in hell. When you, everything happening all around you so fast was going on, when you came up with your first question to yourself, what was it? Well, why am I here? Why am I here? How did I get here? And I didn't understand any of this. Everything was explained on the way back. But at this moment, all I was experiencing was the pain and the torment that these demons were inflicting. You actually could feel Yes. This? I could feel it. Now, I understood that most of the feeling was being blocked, and God explained on the way back that he hid, blocked most of the pain, but he did allow me to feel some of it, the pain so I could relate to people that it's not metaphorical or allegorical. It's real literal pain you're going to feel in hell. The amount I felt was enough. What was the worst experience you had on this guided tour of hell? Knowing that I'll never get out. The hopelessness. You see, that's what God wanted me to experience, what they feel there. See, if I was there as a Christian, which I was, but he hid it from me, I, under I would know I'm getting out of here. Thank God I'm getting out of here. I don't have to stay here. But as an unsaved person, I understood I'll never get out. Ten million years will go by. I'm still there. And that's the worst part, knowing there's no one going to come rescue you. There's no Calvary coming over the hill. There's no angels to protect you. You are lost and in torment and hopeless forever. That was the worst part. Tell me, tell me some of the things you saw with your eyes in hell. I saw these demons, reptilish in appearance, bumps and scales all over the body, huge jaws, sunken in eyes, claws about a foot long. These particular two are about 12 or 13 feet tall. Not, that sounds like an exaggeration, but there's even scripture for that. But uh, they tormented me. They dug their claws in the, in the chest and just tore the flesh open. I couldn't believe I was still alive through this. The flesh just hung like ribbons. I noticed there was no water or blood. But you coming. see, there was a reason that 
the Messiah took him on a guided tour of hell. And when you find out this reason, I believe it's going to change your life forever. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hello, Sid Roth here with Bill and Annette, please. And Bill, you had an experience. Uh, you, you didn't expect it. You didn't want it. Um, but you had it anyway. He had a guided tour of hell for a purpose that you're about ready to find out. But I want to find out more about what you experienced and saw and felt in hell. Tell me a little more. There were demons that tore my flesh open. The flesh hung like ribbons. You have a body in hell. Uh, the one picked me up, threw me into the wall. I felt the bones break. Uh, I felt the pain. And uh, they have an extreme mm. hatred. Now, were you, did you scream? Yes, when you, I did. When you were thrown against the wall? Yes, I did. I, I'm very calm now, but uh, I wasn't there. Now, were other people screaming while you were there? The screams are so loud, Sid, you can't stand it. It's deafening to hear millions of people screaming at the top of their lungs, and you can't ever get away from that. There's no peace or quiet in hell. You have to endure that for all eternity. And like I said, these demons hate you. An extreme hatred they have for God, and they hate you, His creation. And there's nothing you can do to defend yourself. You're, you have no strength in your body. You're completely void of any kind of physical strength. You have to endure the odors, the foul smells in hell are so putrid and disgusting, worse than any open sewer and the smell of burning sulfur. And sulfur is actually toxic to breathe. And you wonder, how could I be alive, breathe in this toxic air, but yet you keep going? There's not enough air to breathe in hell. Just like here, we need air. You don't have enough air there. You have to fight and gas for even the tiniest bit of air. And this is how you breathe in hell. It's like. That was as much air as you could get. So any moment you feel like, I'm going to die from a lack of oxygen. Okay, now he was in hell, even though he was a believer, and it was blocked from his mind that he was a believer. And tell me about the moment you got rescued. I was observing all these people burning in this big, huge, raging pit of fire, surrounded by demons all around me. I was standing on a bed of maggots, uh, just solid maggots. It's disgusting. By the way, could you smell? It was a sense of smell there? Terrible odors, foul, disgusting odors. Like I said, the smell of uh, like an open sewer, uh, the smell of sulfur, which is toxic. Was there any, any quietness? It's so loud. You want to get away from it, but you can't. There is never any peace of mind in hell. You have to endure all the people screaming at the top of their lungs. And as I was observing all this, uh, you're exhausted. You have. You don't ever get to go to sleep in hell. You need sleep, but you don't get to sleep. All right. Tell me about the rescue. Uh, I was being pulled up this tunnel, and suddenly, this bright light appeared. I knew immediately who it was. I, I said, "Jesus," and he said, "I am." And when he said, "I am," I collapsed at his feet, and he touched me. And when I came to. Sid, I didn't see his face, just the outline of a man standing in this bright, pure, holy light. And I didn't want to ask him any questions, but thoughts started coming to my mind. And I thought, Lord, why did you send me to this horrible place? He said, because many people do not believe hell is real. He said, even some of my own people do not believe hell exists. Yeah, but you believed it was real. You didn't I, dwell on it, but you believed it was real. Right, but many Christians do not. They don't believe in a literal burning hell. Many Christians. So don't why did he? Why did he send you? I asked him that. I mean, I would. I would have picked you, but uh, no I supernatural wouldn't. experiences. Uh, I was not a Billy Graham. I was uh, just a realtor going to work every day like anybody else. Were you successful? 